uh, early Saturday morning and everybody's still asleep. And I decided to sneak down here and get a few things done before I have to leave. Uh, it's, um, what is it, May? <laughs> it's May 9th, I think. I don't know. Um, yeah, we've got the, uh, our town's Little League opening day ceremonies were delayed this year. So instead of uh, the usual time in April, they delayed it. So it's actually today. So we've got a Little League parade that we do in town and all the festivities. And I've got two boys in Little League now. So that's what's going to basically take up most of my morning. By the time we get, the, uh, get down there, get all lined up for the parade, do the parade, and then... Uh, get to the field, have the opening ceremonies, yada yada yada. By the time we get back here it'll be lunchtime and then uh, we got games this afternoon. So, well, then last night I couldn't get down here because the wife wanted to watch a movie and we hadn't done that in a while. So, so anyway, I cleaned up that uh, spindle and bull gear there and I'm just putting it on the uh, headstock temporarily to store it. Um, and then I just realized that since I've got it on the headstock now, it's a perfect opportunity to see whether or not this chuck, this small chuck that I've got here on the workbench that's in my way, that was under the lathe, even fits that thing. Yeah, I didn't think so. It, it starts, but then doesn't go any further. It, this chuck looks like it's got a different TPI, it's teeth per inch. Than, uh, than this spindle. I don't know what this fits. Huh. Did I already realize that? I don't remember. You know what, guys? I only had a couple of sips of my first cup of coffee this morning, and I guess that caffeine hadn't gotten to my head yet, because I don't know what that guy was just doing. I was just trying to put the lathe that came with the horde of South Bend parts onto the spindle of my Vernon. So of course it doesn't fit. The uh, South Bend's 8 TPI and the Vernon I think is 6 TPI. So, duh. I don't know why I did that. Well, I know why I did it, because I'm in a fog. <laughs> well, anyways. Oh, um, a little bit of quick news about that horde of South Bend parts. was going back and forth with a gentleman who's got a 15 inch South Bend who, who was ready to buy a ton of parts off of me and was very excited about my my cache of parts and we started comparing notes I started cleaning up some of the parts and we were going over some of the things and uh, something just wasn't working out right and finally what we determined is that that lathe was a 16 inch swing not a 15 turns out the 15 I guess is a pretty rare mongrel from that era uh, O series I think they call it um, his is a 1920-something, I think, and mine's a 1918 or so, based on the serial number. Well, not mine. I don't have the lathe. The parts, I should say. But anyways, uh, it's not like all of that cleaning and work I did was uh, for naught, because now I can relist that puppy as 16-inch uh, parts, which actually works out better, because the... Uh, I was having trouble trying to find out values on the 15 inch parts only because I couldn't even find any 15 inch parts. Whereas the 16, um, the parts are more in demand. So I should have an easier time moving the 16 inch parts. Uh, the study rest alone, I found a couple of study rests um, previously sold on eBay. Um, one was around 150 bucks, and the other one was like 225 or something. But the 225 was a really nice one. I don't think the one that I picked up with this hoard is as nice. All right, guys, I was looking at the cone pulley assembly here, cleaning up some of the dirty oilets on the backside here. And I was noticing that the uh, the area in this bore right here that rides on the spindle that actually when this freewheels on the spindle when it's in back gear mode. It has one of those grooves in it. I don't think that's going to show up, but right there, there's one of those oil grooves in it that the oil's supposed to propagate along and 
and, and keep this lubricated and that was pretty clogged with garbage but I also noticed that as I was trying to clean it out there was one area right where the port is that there's something in there and rather than force whatever that is out at first I thought it was debris now it occurs to me that might be the end of a wick to control the flow of the oil so that's fed through a tube and that tube runs right up to this little set screw right here so this set screw is actually an oiling point and I bet you it's overlooked a lot so I take that little set screw out and then I just notice there's another one over here same thing and unfortunately there's no screw in that one now the screw you can imagine this thing spinning around you don't want some the centrifugal force throwing the oil back out of this hole and getting oil all over your pulley so I can see where the screw would be important the fact that this is missing a screw makes me suspect that unfortunately nobody ever bothered putting oil in this one well not ever but you know in more recent life of the lathe so now that I've got that out see anything's in that hole well, let's see this is pretty much long enough that it should fit through eh, maybe not quite let's see if I can find something just a little longer this is too big that fits. Yeah. See, I thought maybe, I thought maybe if it was felt, I could push the felt out. Yeah, maybe it is. I could just feel the tip of the it's all, but it's still not coming out. Very tight, so I don't know if that felt is at the very bottom there, stuck in there. Hmm. Well, the problem is now the sharp point pushed past whatever that is, but and made a hole in it, but did not take it out. This little piece of it. I'll get this under my magnifier for further analysis. Get the lab boys on this. Definitely fibers. Hmm. He thinks it's a little, it's a little felt cork or plug, so to speak. Question is, how is that meant to come out of there? Assuming at some point in its lifetime, it's designed to be replaced. Of course, I can't push it back up the hole because I can't get anything in there to do that, really. So, I think what I need is I need something that's like a perfect diameter of that hole. There, let's see. This Allen wrench seems like a good fit. Well, more stuff came out and then it passed it again. The question is that I clear enough? Maybe if I grab onto what's sticking out of there now, needle as I can pull the rest out. So what it is, it's 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 a a wick. That's so that the oil that's stored in that hole when you put the little cap on wicks its way out onto that bearing surface very slowly. So I'm going to have to replace that because 
if you leave this out and you put oil down that hole, the oil is going to immediately and quickly get down on this bearing surface and leak out around it, make a mess. Wow, that stuff is really stuck in there. Come on, these pliers stink. Boy, what a pain in the butt this is. Alright, something wasn't making sense here because there's still some of this felt material and it actually seems like it's behind the hole. So it occurred to me that something else is going on here that I don't understand. And I have now figured it out. This groove, which I thought was just an oil groove like on the uh, other um, spindle shaft for one of the gears, is in fact a slot and right here underneath this dirt there's a screw and so what they've done is they've got a slot right here and they've got a hole long hole behind it and in that hole that hole runs into the hole that the pipe for the oil comes in on and inside here they've got a long skinny felt and I'm trying to pull this felt out through this little slot and and not having much success and wondering why and it's obvious because that's not how you do it what you're supposed to do is I'm sure you're supposed to take this screw out which the start is I've got to get enough of the gunk out of the uh, out of the damn slot so I can turn it Wait a minute, is that even a screw? Alright. What the hell is that? That's not even a screw. That's some kind of hardened... Almost like... I don't know what that is. What this material is that I'm chiseling out of this hole. It's not the felt. So I don't know if this is just something... If there was a void here and it got filled in by the... Uh, garbage over the years or if this is like some sort of a wax or something that they use to seal this hole I keep thinking maybe there's still a screw head behind this garbage hole appears to have a little bit of a countersink to the opening maybe could there have been a screw in there that is now missing you know, unfortunately now I'm hitting a lot of resistance. So I could put the blade of this precision screwdriver right into that slot, but unfortunately I can't slide whatever's in there out. Of course I didn't help matters by pulling a lot of this felt through the slot where it's not supposed to be. I could be snagging it in there now. And I certainly can't get to the other side of this earth. Drink some more coffee before it gets cold. Too late. There we go. Some sort of cork material. A good sized chunk of it came out. Just prying. There we go. It looks to me like actually a little piece of leather. Like a little cork of leather.
All right, so a little of the cork in there, and then you. Yeah, now I can clearly see the uh, the whip material. The question is, will it now come out? Now that I fouled it all up and did it wrong. All right, I got an idea. I wonder if. If I put a small drill bit in there, I wonder if I can get the twist drill bit to actually start to like get the fibers to wrap around it and grab it. And then just pull the drill bit out and see if it chases it out. Hey, I think that worked. Now, the only thing that come out one piece, but it just ripped. As old as this thing is, that might be horse hair. Anybody ever seen that show? Furniture to go. I forgot what the name of the show originally was. But Joe and Ed. Furniture refinishing show. It's pretty funny. Right idea or wrong kind of chuck. A keyless chuck. Shock, the oil soaked felt does not want to come out. It does not want to adhere to the roll bit. So, more of it coming out though. I guess if I have to, I could just resort to a drill bit the exact size of this hole. Crude yet effective. I can see it pulling the uh, pulling the stuff right out of the slot.
I feel, I hear footsteps. If the missus is up. Got about half that hole clear now. I've got it cleared as far as down to where the hole where the oil feeds in intersects. That's how far I got. And then I jammed up again. And I can't get the drill bit any further down there. I just need a longer drill bit. Which with the bazillion drills I have, I bet you I have one. Now here's something in my pile of junk I never thought I'd find a use for. Till today. Oh yeah. Ah. See it turning. Grabbing my nitrile glove. Yeah, it's kind of jammed in that slot where I was pushing on it before. Oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, Steve, that was. Oh, pay dirt. I think I had effectively packed, pushed a lot of that stuff way in there, down the end of the hole. Now, by using the scriber tip that can fit through the slot, I can pull the stuff back up towards where the large hole is. And once I get it up where the large hole is, I grab it again. You know what would be good for grabbing this? Hemostats. I've got some. And I think they're all the way upstairs in my office in my electronics toolkit. Hemostats are like little doctor's pliers if you haven't seen them before. They use them to like clamp off a vessel, I guess, blood vessel or something. I don't know. I don't know why I ain't no doctor. I ain't no. Mm -mm. Don't know nothing about no doctoring. That looks like that might be about the last of it right there. Ah, uh, delicious. That hole's clear, Butch. Here's another shot. Show you guys what I'm looking. What I was looking at inside the hole here is this slot. Okay. And this slot was so packed with the dirty felt that I thought it was an oil groove that was clogged. So I was shaving at it like this and trying to get it out and that was completely the wrong way to do it. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to pack this with some sort of a wicking material, probably felt I'm imagining would be the modern day equivalent of whatever this horse hire <laughs> was. <laughs> I'll tell you, it. I could see areas of this that aren't saturated with dirt and oil and the original color on this is an orangey brown. <laughs> Could be horse R. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and then the end of this was plugged with this little bit of material here, which looks very much like cork, cork or leather. So we have to come up with something creative for that also. All right, and because I saw the screw on the other side there, I would venture to guess that. Uh, we're looking at one down, one to go. Oh, man, eh, nothing could be easy. This is a whole nother kettle of fish we've got going here. First off, I can see the threads in here, so I know this was supposed to have a screw in it like I thought, and it's not there. Second of all, I can feel from the way this screwdriver is bottoming out in a soft landing that we've got felt in here, just like the other side. But, we got a different deal going on here with this gear end. I don't know if the light's going to even show this, but 
we've got an oil groove here in this gear but the slot doesn't start until about well the thickness of this gear in is where the slot starts that I can feel felt in there's no hole here to access to get the felt out which means if there is a hole to load the felt in it's probably behind this gear because this gear obviously wouldn't be part of this assembly so this gear must have to come off but it's not coming off because I could see on the inside here there is no separation line so what this this gear looks like is this gear is on the end of a shaft a hollow shaft that's by the looks of it must be press fit into this so what they do apparently is they've got a slot in that sleeve that's on the back of this gear and when they this gets pressed in it has to be it has to be lined up perfectly with the, the uh, what's probably going to be a bore with more felt in it behind here so There's so much oil and dirt and grease on this pulley, this comb pulley, that I'm going to uh, I'm going to throw it in the parts washer after all. I I know I originally said I didn't want to because I didn't want to wet up all of this surface rust here, but I think that we'll, we'll just clean it in the parts washer first and then scour the rust off with a 3M or Scotch Bright pad scouring pad anyways well, I think the first step is going to be to actually remove this gear I'm sure if I look in the back here I can probably see the back of that oh yeah that's going to be a trick some sort of trick hmm I've got to put something through this hole to push on the back of that. Problem is, the maximum diameter I can put through this hole is the diameter of the bore, so it's not going to push. So I've got to put something through this hole that. <laughs> well, the other way to do this, I guess, is with a puller can't get a puller on the outside of this and even if I did I've got nothing to, to the puller to bear on if I put a slide hammer down there with one of those you know swivel ends that will swivel down in there and then catch and then but I got a feeling that that's not going to just come out with slide hammer action I looked all around this bore I mean all around this pulley and I do not see any pins or set screws or grub screws or anything that would be responsible for holding that in there. I'm going to take one more look because I certainly don't want to press and find out that I've got, oh, hold on, what we got there? What is that? Nothing. I think I'll clean this up in the parts washer and inspect it more closely.